awesome God. Wave your hands and give him praise. Give him praise. He's the reason for the season. And give him praise because he is God. And his name alone, alone is worthy to be praised. Wave those hands to him and give him thanks. Just thank the Lord for the cross. Tell him, Lord, I thank you for the cross. Thank him for the cross of Calvary. Your name is awesome. And blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Who else, O oh Lord, is worthy? There is no one, O oh Lord. For your name, O oh Lord, is greater than any other name. I thank you for the victory on the cross. Thank you, everlasting Father, for the grace that you have put upon your people. I thank you, O oh Lord, for the great love on Calvary. Blessed be your name, Lord. For in Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Somebody say, believe in amen. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We are not mourning, we are celebrating. Look at that. Hallelujah. Praise God. And may you sit on the heads of your enemies in the name of Jesus as you take your seats as kings and queens in the Dunamis Palace. Praise God. God is a wonderful God. Am I talking to somebody? What a great God we serve. <laughs> David said, he took my feet from the miry clay and set me upon the rock which I stand. The other day, Jesus said to Peter, he said, at the rock and upon you I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail I bring you good news today from our Lord Jesus Christ 2021 years ago there was a shaking here on earth one of the greatest things that has ever happened took place. And the man, Jesus, was crucified on this day. You know, Crucifixion is an act of shaming. The cross in the time in the time of Jesus Christ was a thing to shame and to despise. It was a place where common criminals were executed. In John chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He said, And whosoever believe. So your duty is just to believe. The only thing that will stop any man, woman, boy, girl from perishing is to believe in that name. Paul was speaking the other day. He said, know it not that ye were bought with a price. Today, I want to talk to you about our Lord and Savior, Jesus. The 
love that God so much love. He said, no greater love than this. Than a man to lay down his life for his friend. The love of Jesus is shed abroad for every man on earth. No greater love than this. Yesterday, I was watching the movie Passion of Christ once again. And while I was watching that movie, tears were just dropping down my eyes. That you and I, the Bible said, even while we were yet sinners, while you were yet a sinner, Christ didn't die for you because you were righteous. Christ didn't die for you because you were perfect. See, even in your imperfection, he so much loved you that he had to die. And while I was watching the, the gruesome murder, pain, and all that was happening, And this scripture ran through my spirit. At the point when he was asked, after the whipping and after the blades, the stripes on him, and he was asked to carry his cross. Child of God, I want to speak to you today briefly on the topic I've captioned, my cross. My cross. The cross is a responsibility. The cross is a weight. The weight of the life of man and the sins of Adam was placed on Jesus. Am I talking to somebody? The, 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 the sins of the whole world was on him. And I took my time to critically look and examine the weight of the cross. It was a beam that was put on him to carry even in the place of the pains and the injuries all over his body. There is something about the cross, child of God. It's a journey that you must go through. It's a journey that you can't escape. Before the activities of him being beaten and carrying the cross, the Bible recorded that he was in the garden in a place called Gethsemane. Some may say, oh, after all, he has grace. He is God and man. I tell you, there come a time when the flesh we have to let you know that there is difference between a celestial body and the flesh. The Bible says he took the form of man. So he was complete man and complete God. Jesus got down there and he went to that particular journey with three of his disciples. He said to them, tarry with me. And the Bible says he went a little bit yonder to pray. And while he knelt down, his soul, his spirit, his body, everything about him was sorrowful. It 
it wasn't the intention of God that man should ever test them. That was not why man was created. Immediately sin was introduced. Death was introduced. Because the end of sin is death. And Jesus coming in the person of the second Adam to abolish the stings of death and the power of the grave. Bible said our Savior, our Lord Jesus went down on his knees and wept and cried. Anguish. The weight of the, of, of the responsibility was on him. And he wept and cried. And said, Father, if this be possible, if it is possible, let this cup pass away. But not my will, but that thy will be done. The will of every man and your desire is to always drop the cross. Because the cross is heavy child of God. Everybody don't want any extra weight on them. The flesh was speaking. And at the same time, Jesus succumbed the flesh to the spirit by saying, Lord, let not my will be done, but thy will be done. You will carry your cross. I will carry my cross. We will all bear our cross. The cross is not a sign of 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 of, um, of weight upon us because Jesus has taken the burdens from us. But this cross is a sign of identifying with the weight and the suffering of Christ. And when he had prayed and tarried, and there was no answer, he knew that he has to go through this road. There are times in your life that you just feel like nobody is understanding you. And there are times also in your life that you, you see that even when you are calling people to come tarry with you, you just find yourself alone. Jesus was at that point. He found himself alone. And the scriptures say, woe unto him that is alone. Asconded, even those that sang his praises just a few days ago in Jerusalem where the same people that told Pilate and said let his blood be upon our head and upon the head of our children hallelujah You must understand that no trial comes your way without a promotion. Every trial that comes your way and you are able to stand strong, it will guarantee you greater promotion because you are consistent. Paul was tried. And after all, he came through. He said, I have fought a good fight. Kept the faith. I finished my race. My course is done. And I know one thing that thou await for me. A crown of glory which my father will give to me. After every cross comes a crown. No cross, no crown. No pain, no glory. Don't always be in a haste to jump out of your trial times. Because out of if if you if you go to where if you go to where um, um, gold is being found 
and you see the raw gold, you wouldn't desire anything out of it. What makes gold to be desired is the fire. When the fire has hit the gold and the gold has gone through the fire, then it comes out purified, sweet and lovely. As much as God would bless you and increase you, you can't, you can't go on. Right. Haven't you discovered that every precious and, 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 and glorious thing is hidden from the eyes of men? You can't walk on the street and find diamond. No. Even the countries that have diamond, you have to dig. Somebody say dig. Stop becoming so lazy as a believer not to dig. Make sure you are not afraid of the cross, the process. Be bold to go through the process so you will come out as a finished product. The process is not to kill you. The process is to make you. Those days when you know your parents comes and wake you up so early in the morning and they tell you baby it's time to go to school you cry like Kamsi will do he'll keep everybody awake at night and keep you awake at morning when you wake him up and say it's time he will cry because the body wants comfort Can I hear you say my cross? My cross is my cross. My cross can never be your cross. There are certain roads that I can't go in with everybody. There are certain journeys. It's not because people don't want to go with you, but they are not permitted to cross that gate with you. Because a time comes when destiny will speak. Why? Because God wants to take the glory. And not no man will take the glory of God in your life. So the cross is a process. I tell people, I say, when you read the Old Testament, you will always hear, and it shall come to pass. And when you keep reading down, and you will see another word that says, it came to pass. And I tell you something between, it shall come to pass, and it came to pass. There is what I call interlude in the midst of them. The scripture never tells us what goes on in the midst of, or in the middle of it shall come to pass and it came to pass. Child of God, that is the process of you being made. That is your waiting season and your time to prove what you believe. Job the other day he said I will wait he said, all the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change comes don't be fast to point fingers at other people when they are carrying their cross <laughs> don't mock them either their cross may look mockable but you are not permitted to mock them. Their cross may look laughable, but you are not permitted to laugh at them. That's why when I'm moving, I'm carrying my cross. I carry it with my head up, my face up, my chest up, with boldness in my spirit. Because I know that I carry it not by my strength alone, but by the special grace of God. The other day, Paul was down and finished. They stoned him and left him to die. Jesus came and said, no, son, you, you, you are not going to die. He said, my grace is sufficient. When the grace of Elohim in your life becomes so sufficient, you experience pains even in the midst of God being with you. I don't know if I have people in this house today that are a witness of that. 
that the Lord say he's with you. Even in the midst of God being with you, you still have the pains. Even in the midst of you prophesying, you still got an illness you're dealing with. Even in the midst of you passing through trials and temptation, he still comes and tells you, I am with you. He's with you. And he can. He has never left your side for one day. While Jesus was carrying that cross on his shoulder, they were at the point I asked the question, he said, Why allow the man to carry the cross in peace? Why whip him and you want him to successfully carry the cross? Can I talk to somebody in the house? Many times you are carrying your cross, but people will whip you, they will speak you in way and manner that will tempt you to take away the place of God and the glory of God from you. That's why I tell you do not listen to the voices behind you. They are distractions. If Satan feels like he is strong enough why hide in the midst of the crowd at least go, at least a man a giant called Goliath was bold enough <laughs> Goliath was bold enough to come out and show his face and challenge the children of Israel I tell you child of God you, you may not know what you carry inside of you until you are confronted you are confronted you may not know such grace inside of you that you could kill a giant I believe that before the time of Goliath if you had told David that you would kill a giant David would say no but when the grace of God the anointing sees anything that is anti-redemption it stirs up and get ready for fight and battle when David saw Goliath the anointing in him to kill giants awakened. I pray for you today that the anointing to slay giants will awake inside of you. I pray for you today that the anointing to defeat giants will wake up inside of you in the name of Jesus. Sufficient grace. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Jesus kept moving. Child of God, keep moving. I tell you, keep moving. Don't stop. One of the challenges you will always experience when you are carrying your cross is people coming to pull you aside. They pull you to the side try to drag the cross because they know that the breakthrough you are believing God for is in the cross. Jesus knew that he had to get up to Golgotha so he would be crucified so that his mission will be fulfilled. I care not to know who you are but I tell you one thing for sure. All you need is your mission to be fulfilled. Jesus was born for one purpose. To restore mankind back to its creator. That is just the total purpose why he came. To restore back the, 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 the spiritual relationship and integrity of man back to God. And he waited till that time. How many years was his ministry? Just three years. Jesus did his ministry for three years. How much is his congregation? Just 12 followers. And the impact of his ministry today is still what we all are talking about till date. Child of God, carry that cross. I say to you today, carry the cross. 
like some believers that when you put a little weight on them, they are quick to throw it off and tell you, I say, how wicked you are to put such a weight on me. Weights don't kill you. Mm -mm. The cross, you don't, you don't literally die on the cross. No. And the cross can't kill you because the cross could not kill Jesus but in it was the mission of Christ being fulfilled the reason why I tell you the truth Satan never knew that the purpose of Jesus was to restore back mankind can I talk to somebody he never even knew who Christ was he thought that Jesus was one of those prophets because if he knew who Christ was, he wouldn't come to tempt him for Christ to expose or reveal his identity. He knew that there was something about this person. The same spirit and power that came against Elijah in the form of Jezebel is the same that was pursuing Jesus. Elijah's ministry didn't last so long. Why? Because he failed to understand that the God that has brought him thus far, that he was able to kill the prophets of Baal, execute every one of them. He failed to understand that that same grace is capable and willing to carry him through and to defeat Jezebel. And his ministry was cut short. Should we talk about Moses? Moses' ministry also was cut short. Because the mission of Moses was to take the children of Israel down into the promised land. But something happened along the line that altered his ministry. And that was why when Jesus went to pray and to prepare himself for the cross. There were two that appeared to him to strengthen him. That was Elijah and that was Moses. The Bible never recorded what they told Jesus. But I believe they told Jesus that you can't fail because all humanity, the destiny of mankind is in your hand. I believe they told him. They strengthened him so well. They reminded him how they also failed and why he must not fail. Child of God, you have to really understand that the grace that God has given to you is enough to defeat any devil that rises against you. And today, we are gathered to celebrate the day that he was crucified. We call it Good Friday. Because we are not calling it Bad Friday. Uh, because if we have no understanding, we will call it a, a Black Friday. This is no Black Friday. This is Good Friday. And Jesus started his journey down in hedges to take back what belongs to man. In one of the scriptures in the book of Psalms 24 the Bible said and when he ascended down he came before the gates of hell. The gates were shut. When men try to stop you, they are only ending up aiding you. Aiding you to get to your place of testimony. Jesus got down to that particular location and looked at the gate. He recognized the gate. 
He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. It called it everlasting doors. Right? Because the door is a door that has been sealed for ages. The door is a door that no sacrifice was able to open. Can I talk to somebody? When God chased out Adam and Eve from the garden, what did he do next? He commanded the angel to lock the gates. And the Bible say at the entrance of that particular garden that there is an angel with a blazing sword. Which means that place was closed against man. Man was pushed into the world. Man was pushed in and everything about man was taken. Man was stripped of his authority. All what the old, the old prophets were doing is to try their best to see how to restore partially forgiveness by offering sacrifices of bulls and animals to cleanse them which is not able to sustain them for more than a day so in that the Lord brought in a mystery Satan may have an idea but Satan has no knowledge That's why you got to understand. The Bible said Jesus called it an everlasting door. A door that has been sealed. And when he said, lift up your heads, ye everlasting doors. And the Bible said a voice spoke. A voice spoke from the other side and asked him a question. Who is this king of glory? Why? Because they never knew that God has stepped out of God all this while into the earth to demystify the bondage of man. Because they never knew. They asked the question. That is impossible. The other time we checked, he was still up there. Who is this king of glory? No king has ever come to this place where we are. No king has ever arrived in darkness. Who is this king of glory? And they asked that question. They kept on asking. I believe that hell was set ablaze. I believe that confusion was everywhere. Because they said, have we made a mistake and miscalculated? Who died? Who was the one that died? And Jesus identified himself. <laughs> I am that I am. I am the Alpha and Omega. I am he that died. And I am still in my process of resurrecting. Uh, and the other day the scripture said. And he took from the devil the keys of life and death. Am I talking to somebody? Ah, uh, Zatabaro Shataba. He identified himself. He said, I am he that sits on the thrones of Jasper. Hey, and I put my leg upon the earth and use it at my footstool. I am he that died and I'm resurrected. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. And hell was set loose. See, I am he. And he commanded them again the second time. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. No wonder the Bible recorded that Jesus explicitly spoke to his disciples. Say, I have given you power and authority. He said, Whatsoever from today you bind here on earth is bound in heaven. And whatever you lose here on earth is loose in heaven. Jesus said, I by myself cannot do anything except my Father which worketh all in me. And I said today that you by yourself cannot carry that cross except Christ in you which is the hope of glory. This I say to you today, 
understand and view me. Jesus was talking to them from a perspective, from a height, because they lack understanding, they couldn't see beyond their nose. There is a reason. Touch somebody say there is a reason. That you're going through what you're going, child of God, there is a reason. That you're experiencing what you're experiencing, child of God, there is a reason. That you are being persecuted, child of God, there is a reason. That you are being oppressed and depressed, child of God, there is a reason. There is always a reason. Today we are bold and strong enough to look at ourselves and say we've been transformed. It wasn't this, I mean, I mean the mystery of the blood of Jesus. That blood, that blood that was shed on Calvary. The Bible said that that blood speaketh better things than the blood of Abel, which is a man, and the blood. Because the blood of Abel spoke but could not redeem itself. The blood of Abel spoke by crying. <laughs> the blood of my Lord Jesus Christ does not cry. The blood of my Lord Jesus Christ does not cry and cannot cry. The blood is a blood and that speaketh better things not crying things, not complaining things, not wicked things. The blood speaks better things. So next time an enemy comes to take your cross from you, tell the enemy, I say, no way, no way, for the blood speaketh better things. That's why each time an enemy comes against us, we decree the blood of Jesus is against you. You know why? Because the blood will always fight against anything that is not of God. Am I talking to somebody? That blood is powerful. The other day when we served communion, a lady testified how the Lord changed her blood and gave her a new blood. That blood that speaks great things. The benefit of the cross. And the Bible said that why they took him to Golgotha. They got to the place of crucifixion. And Jesus was at that place, hung on the cross. They started tempting him. If you say you are actually the son of God, eh, come down from the cross. Men will always want to tease you. They will always want to tempt you. They will want to make you do things that is out of order. That is what the devil always does. He wants to pick you from the place of testimony and bring you to the place where he can accuse you before God. And they were all there telling him, even the, the, the irresponsible thief that was by his right hand side told him, at first, the thief told him, I said, why are you embracing your cross like a foolish man? Look at this man. You are pers being persecuted that you are persecuted. See, let me tell you. Let me tell you. It is not the stars that makes generous. It is the scars that makes you a general. Want to be a general? Tell me how many scars you have. See those lines here, they put those stars they put. It is not supposed to be a star. It's supposed to be a scar. Jesus had his own scar. You, you, you which one do you have? 
before you criticize some other person's rising, their star, show me your own scar that makes you a star. Show me your scar. Some don't have scars at all. Their body is so smooth like the body of a two months old baby. So smooth. Nothing has happened to them. They've not even seen anything but they speak as though they carry scar. And when you meet such kind of people, tell them please off your shirt. Let me see what you have. Take off your clothes. Let me see the scars. Let me see the knife, the piercing of men on your back. Let me see that I can have respect for you and call you a general. But until then, hold your peace. Hold your peace. The cross is not an easy road. It wasn't a journey for babies. It wasn't. And Jesus knew. And that was why he was so sorrowful. The pains, the, 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 the burdens of sin was laid on him. And he was the guilty one. That's why I say to you, if the Son of Man has set you free, you are free indeed. No man has the audacious authority to put you in bondage because you were bought with the price. At the cross, things happened at the cross. One of the things I want to let you understand also, you can still be on your cross and forgive. When Jesus was hung at the cross, a detractor came, being a thief, to despise him. One of the things you do also at the cross, you don't answer detractors. You don't answer them. Did Jesus answer the man that, that, that spoke ill of him? No, he did not answer those that spoke ill of him. Let God be the one to answer them. And the one that spoke good of him, the Bible said, whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall reap. When the man spoke good of him, he turned to him and said, today, you will be with me in my kingdom, in my paradise. You will be with me. Now, how ironic it is that he is there on the same punishment. Yet, the man did not despise him and say, who are you to tell me that? After all, the both of you, are, two of us are on the same level. You are treated as a thief. I am treated also as a thief. But that man saw something. That man saw something in Jesus that many did not see. And he requested, will you remember me in your paradise? The person seated next to you today, you may look at that person as a commoner, as a nobody. You don't know where your savior will emanate from tomorrow. You don't know who God has put your destiny in his hands. You say, Pastor, did you say that? I say, I am telling you right now that God puts destinies of men in the hands of men. There are some people, if they die today, some destinies are gone. Your, your destiny is tied to somebody. And when you go about treating people badly and treat them wrongly, you never know one you will treat and your word will be locked and be gone. Jesus invited him to the kingdom. Whether you like it or you enjoy it or not, that does not mean anything. Whether you criticize or not, the man, you may call him a thief, but he has gone to glory. Be busy, be talking about what he stole. He has gone with the Messiah. show you something in scripture as a random Luke chapter 9 Luke chapter
chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, Jesus prophesied about his death. And, and things to come. Are you there? If you're there, say, believe in amen. Luke chapter 9, let's look at uh, from verse 22. Saying, the Son of Man must suffer many, 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 not some things, many things, and be what? Rejected. I'm giving you now examples of the cross. What you must see. If you don't see all these things, you are not carrying the cross. He said, you must what? Suffer many things and be what? Rejected of the elders and chief priests and the scribes and be what? And be what? When people slay you, that slain there do not just connote being like killing somebody with with um, with a knife or a gun. Jesus said the other day that you have heard that thou shalt not kill and you shall love your brother. But he said, but I tell you the, the truth. Anyone that hated his brother is a murderer. So people can slay you even while you are alive. Verse 23. And he said to them all. Now imagine if it was in the normal circumstances. Jesus would have started saying something else. Because he's talking about the, the, the details of the cross and the pains he was to go through. Now the next thing he jumped into was to say to them and, and say unto them all. If any man. So you can put your name there. If any man will come after me, let him do what? Deny himself and take up his cross daily, daily and follow me. So you don't follow God once and just once and that's it. No, you follow God once and for all. For all times you are with him. If any man, if you would love me, deny yourself. The reason why many cannot be good believers is because they, they have given their life to Christ, but they still hold their life to themselves. <laughs> the reason why many are struggling is because they still believe that they are the one that are keeping themselves I tell you he said let him deny himself are you able to deny yourself today Jesus denied himself that's one of the scars of the cross. You have to deny who you are. You have to take away those pride in you. Whether you have PhD or HPD or, or, or PDF or whatever it is. You have to take that mentality out from your heart. And serve God. Or else you're a hypocrite. Some are busy counting souls that they have won for the kingdom. Some are busy counting papers, degrees, qualifications. Who has degree helped? Go to the hospitals, you will see men with great degrees. They are struggling to breathe. Go to, go to places, you will see men that their two legs are off. Degree could not keep the legs. But I have a God. Somebody say, I have a God. I have a God that can give life even to the dead man. This morning, just this morning, as I was getting set for service, a son of mine called me very early. He sent me a voice note. You know him, Tammy, the guy that is coming. He came out. He called me and he said, Daddy, put me in prayers. My dad was just hit with stroke and is unconscious. When I, when I listened to that, I said, No. I said, This is out of order. God will not, Jesus will not be dying 
and resurrect him. And a believer is dying. He resurrected for the purpose of us to have life. He said, by his stripes, by his stripes, we are healed by the stripes of Jesus. And he said, he died that we may have life and even have it more in abundance. I said, no, this is anti-redemption. When I finally called him, I was hearing people shouting and making noise. They were in the ICU. They were trying to revive the man. The man is gone. He was crying, Daddy, please help me. Daddy, please help me. Daddy, please help me. And I said to him, son, are you close to him? He said, yes. I said, go and touch his foot. And as he touched his foot, I held the phone and I prayed just for five minutes. And I told him, I said, I will call back in the next 30 minutes and I'm getting a testimony from you. And when I called back in 35 minutes, glory be to God Almighty. The man was not only awake, but he was very responsive. God restored back his life and gave him his life. And I said to him, I said, son, Jesus will not be resurrected and your father be dying. That this gospel that we preach will not be sabotaged by the devil. Will not be sabotaged by the devil. That devil is a liar. That devil is a liar. In the cross you have faith. In the cross you have production. You are, in the cross you have glory. God glorifies men in the cross. God crowns men in the cross. In the praise of you carrying your cross. Jesus said deny yourself. Put that scripture up. Jesus said deny yourself of gratification. Deny yourself of self gratification. One of the things that makes people not to carry their cross in hope and in faith and with boldness is because self is still speaking. If it's not because of self, when pastor talk to you, you get angry. Say, how dare you talk to me that way? It is because of self. You are not yet dead. You are still living. The other day, Jesus said, all you go through this process you have to die when yourself is still alive all your five senses will be operating and you will be operating with human intellectuals you will be operating with logical reasonings and not covenant sense we don't operate with common sense common sense tells you that when you don't like the way people talk to you, you have to lash back on them. Common sense tells you about your right. Common sense tells you that you have to protect your image. But the confident sense we have is a confident sense that when you are being slain, you are quiet. You are just watching like a lion because the other day, your father is a lion of the tribe of Judah. So you keep watching. He said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Deny yourself. Deny yourself. Jesus said, until you deny yourself, the cross, you can't see it. It is in the place of where you deny yourself, your eyes will be open and you see the cross that talk about responsibility and you carry the responsibility. And he said, when you take up the cross, take it daily. Don't drop it tomorrow. Consistently follow me. Consistently follow me. Consistently follow me. And when you read that, when you read that, I want to show you something again. When you read that in verse 24, you say, whosoever, ah, my God. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you seeing what I'm seeing in verse 24? Look at chapter 9, verse 24. He said, whosoever will save his life, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whoever will 
we save it. Some people are looking for a way to save their life. No wonder they are losing everything they have. They lose their peace. They lose their sleep. They lose their rest. They lose their life. They lose and they become a loose person for life. I don't seek to keep my life. I don't have integrity. Jesus is my integrity. I don't have a lawyer. Jesus is my lawyer. The other day, the Bible called him my counselor. One that stands for me. He's not just a counselor, but he's a wonderful counselor. He talks with me. He tells me even the deepest things of the secrets. Am I talking to him? Because I have denied myself. I have picked up my cross. And I am following him daily. And part B of that scripture says, But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, for my sake, not for the sake of family, boyfriend, husband, or, or wife. For the sake of Christ. Oh my God. He said, the same shall save it. So in the midst of you losing it, letting it go, is when you are actually getting it. That was the mystery that Satan did not understand. The mystery of the cross. Jesus was losing it. But he never knew that was when Jesus was getting it. And Jesus, heaven took hell on our ways. They never knew what transpired. They believed that they have killed one of those prophets that do rise up in Israel. But they don't know that this is God himself manifesting in the image of man. I tell you the truth. May there be a mystery that the Lord will unveil for your sake. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it, let that amen come like fire. They never knew. Luke 14, 27. Let me show you something. Luke 14. Verse 27. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. I confess to you, Holy Spirit of God. I have no power of my own. Verse 27. Are you there? He said, And whosoever doth not hear, bear his cross and come after me cannot be. Did you read that? Cannot be my disciple. Whosoever doth not bear his cross, his what? Did you hear our cross? Did he say our cross? Did you say did you did you see it there say their cross? No, his is a personal race. And your cross is personal. No relative, no friend, no nothing. It's a personal. Did you see any angel die with Christ on the cross of Calvary? So no angel died with him and he died alone and he's glorified <laughs> there is a great reward in Colossians chapter 2 because of the great things that Jesus did the Bible says and the father is now pleased to dwell in him that's why the book of Revelation did not talk about two thrones talks about one white throne, a great white throne of judgment and he said he that sits on that throne his, his, his look is like the son of man and also also they know him when they see him because he's, been, he's, he's, he's to be praised and worshipped his glory is re was revealed in the cross Everything Jesus was speaking and saying to his disciples 
were he preparing their hearts over what is about to come but the glory of Christ was revealed in the cross rise up to your feet rise up to your feet lift up your hands and begin to glorify the name of the Lord Father Lord I take all glory to you I thank you for the cross I thank you oh Lord for salvation go ahead and glorify his name somebody Lord I thank you Lord Jesus I give you praise there is none to be compared with you oh Lord your name is worthy you are glorious I thank you for the cross Come on, somebody open your mouth and begin to ask the Lord. Say, give me grace, Holy Spirit, to carry my cross. Give me grace, O Lord. Let your grace be sufficient for me. Give me grace. Give me grace. Give me grace. Grant me grace, O Lord, to follow you, O Lord. Give me grace, O Lord, to continually follow you. Let my steps be ordered by you, Holy Spirit. May I carry my cross, O Lord. May I carry the cross and may I follow you daily in the name of Jesus. Lord, I rebuke every detractors. I rebuke every distraction in the name of Jesus. I decree, O Lord Jehovah, that your grace will be upon your people. I ask, O Lord, that your might and your glory be revealed to everyone. Lord, I pray let the grace to move and to carry this cross come upon them all. In the name of Jesus we pray and amen. Somebody lift up your voice and give him praise. Jam those hands together. He is awesome God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. He's able. He's able. 